Okay, so this is our first video in our um, new topic um, where we're going to take our understanding of derivative and gradient function from the previous topic and now look at applications of that. Um, so when is it helpful to calculate a derivative or, or how is it useful in, in solving certain problems? One of the first applications we want to look at or the first application we want to look at is rates of change. And we started off the previous topic by talking about rates of change and establishing that understanding that, you know, a rate of change is looking at how does one quantity change as another quantity changes. Um, and that's um, essentially gradient. The rate of change is the gradient because gradient is how does y change or how does the independent variable change um, as the as x or the dependent variable changes. Um, so how does the, you know, variable on the vertical axis change as the variable on the x-axis, on the horizontal axis changes. And so we had a look at rates of change, its connection to gradient. We also talked about um, the idea of constant and non-constant rate of change, um, and that's the difference between gradient of a straight line, which we already knew how to calculate, versus gradient of a curve, which is what the previous topic, topic was about. So differentiation giving us a gradient function that enables us to calculate the gradient of a curve at a particular point. The other aspect of rate of change we talked about was the difference between instantaneous rate of change and average rate of change. So instantaneous rate of change, which we simply call the rate of change, um, is given by the gradient at a particular point or instant. Okay. So let's say we've got a let's say we've got a function, and we're interested in its y equals f of x, and we and we've got x equals a and x equals b, and let's say we're interested in the rate of change when x equals a. That means what we want to know is the gradient at x equals a. And we now know that that can be found by finding the derivative of the function and substituting a into that, so f dash at a. So instantaneous rate of change is going to require a derivative to calculate. Average rate of change, um, we already knew how to calculate um, before we even learned about derivative. Average rate of change is essential, is just the gradient of the straight line that joins the two points. So the average rate of change from a to b would be the gradient of the straight line from A to B. So that would simply be calculated. It's a straight line, so we don't need derivative. It's gradient, it's rise over run. So um, the rise being F of B minus F of A over the run being B minus A. Okay. So average rate of change, no differentiation required. It's rise over run, gradient of a straight line. Instantaneous rate of change is gradient of a curve at a point, and so we need differentiation. Okay, let's have a look at some examples. Um, for the function f of x um, equals x squared plus 4x plus 2, so a quadratic function, a parabola, um, find an expression for the instantaneous rate of change at any value x. So that's just asking us to find the derivative. We want to find a way to describe the rate of change for any x value, and hence we want the gradient function. So f dash x is going to be 2x plus 4 in this case. Then we want to find the rate of change, remembering that rate of change automatically implies we want the instantaneous rate of change. We would have to specify if we wanted the average rate of change. Find the rate of change at x equals 3. The fact that we want rate of change at a point also suggests that it's instantaneous rate of change. So derivative when x equals 3. 2 times 3 plus 4 is 6 plus 4, which is 10. Find the average rate of change between x equals 1 and x equals 3. Okay, so this is going to be gradient of a straight line. So it's rise over run. Change in the y values, f at 3 minus f at 1, over change in the x values, 3 minus 1. Um, so f at 3, maybe I'll just calculate those off to the side. So f at 3 is going to be 3 squared plus 4 times 3 plus 2. So that's 9 plus 12 plus 2, 14 plus 2, that's 23. And f at 1 is going to be 1 squared plus... 4 times 1 plus 2, so that's 1 plus 4 plus 2, so that's 7. Okay, so we've got 23 minus 7 over uh, 3 minus 1, which is 2. Uh, 23 minus 7, uh, what am I doing, is 16 over 2, and so it is 8. Now that problem has no context, um, no units, no nothing, so those answers are fine as they are. Let's talk about some problems where we have some context and, and units to be dealing with as well. So example two, we have a spherical balloon being, is being inflated. The volume, v centimetres cubed, of the balloon in terms of the radius is given by the formula v equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. So that's just the formula for volume of a sphere. It's connecting two variables, the volume and the radius. Um, 
and it specifies here that um, we're only interested in that rule where r is somewhere between 0 and 6. So we're inflating the balloon from um, essentially nothing, so where r is equal to 0, to at most a balloon with a radius of 6 centimetres. Okay, so we're not inflating it beyond them, we're just interested in that, not time period, but that range of r values. Find the instantaneous rate of change of the volume in terms of r. So it's not a rate of change with respect to time, it's a rate of change with respect to r. So as the radius is changing, how is the volume changing? Okay, rate of change of volume with respect to r is going to be dv dr, and so we can differentiate this expression. Remember that's all just a number, 4 thirds pi is a number, so we've got a number times r cubed. We know we multiply by 3, that's going to give us 4 pi instead of 4 thirds pi, and then we subtract 1 from the power. So 4 pi r squared is our rate of change. So that's describing um, as the radius changes, how does the volume change? Over the domain 0 to 6, dv dr is bigger than or equal to 0. What does this mean in the context of the balloon? So as we're inflating the balloon from a radius of 0 to a radius of 6, the fact that the rate of change, um, well, I shouldn't have used the word inflating, the fact that the rate of change is bigger than or equal to 0 is because we are inflating the balloon. Okay. So dv dr bigger than or equal to 0 means the rate of change is positive. So as the radius increases, the volume is increasing. Okay. Means um, that the balloon is inflating. So as r increases, v is increasing. Um, for that range of values. Um, at what rate, correct to one decimal place, so we we'll use our CAS, is the volume increasing with respect to R when R is 5? Okay, so we want to know when is the volume, what, sorry, at what rate is the volume increasing with respect to R? So that is dvdr. dvdr equals what when R is equal to 5 is what this question says. Okay, so let's sub 5 into our expression for dvdr, which we've got in part a. So it's 4 pi times 5 squared. 5 squared is 25. 4 times 25 is 100. So that's 100 pi. Now this has units. Okay, it's a rate. It's going to be something per something. And the derivative tell, helps you here. So you have differentiated volume with respect to radius. So this is in units of volume per units of radius. So volume is measured in centimetres cubed in this problem and radius is measured in centimetres. So what we're seeing is when the radius is 5, for every 1 centimetre increase in radius, the volume is increasing by 100 pi cubic centimetres. Okay, let's have a look at another example. Example 2. The population, P, of insects is modelled by the equation P of T equals 4T squared minus 2 thirds. Oh, sorry, I realised the previous question asked us to give our answer to one decimal place. So let's just get 100 pi. Oh, sorry. 100 pi. Control enter. Uh, so that is 314.2 cubic centimetres per one centimetre of radius. Okay, sorry, so here we've got our population of insects. It's a cubic function. Um, we've got a graph um, showing what's happening. For what values of t is the population increasing? Okay, so we can see that when t is between zero and four, um, the population is clearly going up. So it's not actually increasing at zero because we've got zero gradient at that point. It's not actually increasing at four because we've got zero gradient at that point. So it's essentially where is the derivative bigger than zero? Population will be increasing when the rate of change is positive. Okay, And so that is when t is between zero and four. For what value or values of t is the population decreasing? So the population is decreasing when the rate of change is negative, the gradient is negative, and that is when t is between 4 and 6. What is the average rate at which the population is increasing over the first three days? Okay, so here's um, 3 here. All right, so over the first three days, so from t equals 0 to t equals 3, um, we want to find the gradient of that straight line. 
for the average rate of change. Okay, So we essentially want P of 3 minus P of 0 over 3 minus 0. Okay, so uh, maybe just calculate P of 3 over here. So it's going to be 4 times 3 squared minus 2 thirds times 3 cubed. So that is 4 times 9 minus 2 thirds times 27. 4 nines are 36. 1 third of 27 is 9, so 2 thirds of 27 are 18. And so that is 18. Um, so we have 18 minus P of 0 is clearly 0 over 3 minus 0, so it's 18 on 3. So it is 6. Now let's think about some units here. So this is population being divided by time in days. So it's going to be 6 people, which is the units of population, per day, which is the units of time. Okay, so over the first three days, the population is increasing on average by 6 people per day. At what rate is the population changing when t equals 3? Okay, so we want the gradient at t equals 3. So this is p dash at 3. So let's work out the derivative. So that's going to be 8t minus 2t squared. Okay, and so when t equals 3, 8 times 3 minus 2 times 3 squared. So that is 24 minus uh, 18, and so that is 6 people per day. So it's the same as the previous one, and that's just an accident of this particular situation. And so what that's actually telling us is that the straight line I drew on the graph here for part B, if I were to extend that, that's actually a tangent at that point. It's got the same gradient as it, um, at t, um, t equals 3. So at what, what rate is the population decreasing when t equals 5? Okay, we need to be a bit careful about this in terms of how we answer the question. So we want to know the derivative at 5. We want to know about the gradient at 5. So it's going to be 8 times 5 minus 2 times 5 squared. So that is 40 minus 50. So it's negative 10. Now we need to be really careful about how this question is phrased. At what rate is the population decreasing? Okay, so the derivative tells us at what rate the population is changing. Okay, so the population is changing by negative 10 people per day on the fifth day. But that means it is decreasing by 10 people. Okay, so therefore it is decreasing by 10 people per day. So be careful about the phrasing of the question, okay? The derivative tells you about how the, how the quantity is changing. So if it specifies, um, you know, by, how, by what rate is it increasing or by what rate is it decreasing, you have to make sure that you answer the question. The population isn't decreasing by negative 10 people per day. It's changing by negative 10 people per day, which means it is decreasing by 10 people per day. So just be really careful about that one. Okay, so the work today is from a worksheet on rates of change.